A four-hour Bayonne zoning board meeting held at Nicholas Arasco School on converting the 23,000-square-foot facility on East 24th into a mosque and community center and also attended by approximately 500 people adjourned disappointingly without a vote. William Finnerty, the attorney of the Bayonne Muslims community, provided a presentation that explained how the applicant is seeking a variance for only 36 parking spaces, different from last year's proposed 78 spaces. The variance reflected the lowered number of prayer mats per service by increasing for the availability of services a day. Paul Anderson, an exterior site plan engineer, was the first to testify on behalf of Finnerty's presentation. We specified that the zoning requirement requires you to have 62 parking spaces, or you've come up with you can have 62 parking spaces. The, the zoning requirement is for is 62 spaces. And how did that? How do you arrive at that? It's an analysis of the uses proposed. In this case, it's the number of prayer mats at one per four prayer mats, and there's. Uh, there's calculations for other types of use, like office use and other assembly uses. And okay, you go so through you... the areas of, of each of these and multiply it by the, uh, the parking required for those areas, you come up with the number 62. When you say that the FEMA is not in the flood zone, that area gets flooded all the time. Uh, Halecki Park is right there, and it gets flooded all the time. So um, I'm not sure if your information is that correct. What's the, the question? question? How close is the flood zone to, he said, how, how close is it? Is it feet or block? How close it was, is it? It was in a, within a few feet of the property. Few feet. Yeah. So it's very safe to say a very few feet with a major storm that this thing could get flooded. Yeah. Um, when we talk about the floor mat situation, what, how do you determine how many floor mats it really is going to be. It seems to be very vague, very evasive, and we just can't get a straight answer. I want to know if there's 400 people that come there on a Saturday or a Sunday in the middle of a holiday or Ramadan, I want to know what's going to happen. Are you just going to open up the floodgates, no pun intended, and let people on the floor mats? What's going to happen? Who is going to be there? What security? What, how are we going to be protected, the people that live in that neighborhood? Oh, what assurance oh, do we have? Wait a minute. You can't answer 100 questions at one time. It is, is based on the amount of floor mats. You could not give anybody any positive answers, any assurances that whether there's going to be 130 floor mats or whether there's going to be 300 mats. Who is able to determine how many floor mats or how many people are actually going to be in this facility at one time? Well, first, there are prayer mats, not floor mats. Uh, secondly, they're shown, uh, the layout is shown on the architectural plan as part of our application. That's what we intend to do. Uh, enforcement of uh, site plan, approved site plans is always difficult for a governing body. It's certainly not an engineering issue. So does this adaptive reuse apply to the building, to the fence, or to both, or separately? My backyard, and specifically my backyard, with the exception of 24 feet inches, is fence. I can present you paperwork right off the site. I am saying to you, why cannot I be conformity and get a buffer where the fence is? You want the fence moved? Yes, I do. If this and, is going to go, that do? You're not it's going to give buffer. me a 30-foot buffer so I can sit in my backyard and not hear noise all day. Next up was John Steger, a traffic engineer. On your report, you show a 10 to 10, 15 p.m. Okay? And then you show the two additional services. Okay? Now, we'll move along. If you can't comment on that, I'd love to hear it. Well, the, um, the 1 to 145, it's in my report with, with, with three to four people. On Friday, it's the same time period. But it will be instead of a single service, it'll it's I'm more concerned be about services. the I'm ten. Finished. I'm more concerned about the ten to ten fifteen one because that was never even stated in Mr. Wahid's testimony. I mean ten fifteen. I want to sleep. You know, I don't want to hear it at eleven o'clock. Okay, hold it. Hold it. Okay. Mr. you live in Bayonne. You asked. I'm asking a question, and please respect the question. No, but my mother used to. I don't care about your mother. That's another song. It's not a lie. It's got to stop. Oh, sir. One more. 
remark, you're sitting down. Okay? Why would I have to sit down when I'm because in your And he tells me, you know, I asked about him living in Bayonne, he's telling me about his mother. And I can totally disagree with you making comments that there's 40 or 50 empty spots. I almost got hit by a car just the other day when a car was zooming on AFUF, and this was at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Page 18 he said there would be up to 50 to 60 kids coming on on Saturday. How many of those kids are going to be transported in? I assume every one of them. Yes. On page 18, yeah, be sat here. Saturday 50 to 60 this. kids. Yes. And how are they getting there? Excuse me. How are they going to get there? They'll probably be dropped off by their parents. So it's safe to say if every parent has one kid, maybe two, that means all these cars are going to be constantly coming and going. Is that safe to say? Did you do the traffic study on Saturday? I don't, most people in the wintertime, maybe the summertime they're traveling, but in the wintertime, people are home on Saturday. That's they work Monday thing. through Friday. So did you take into consideration on Saturday, people sleep till 11, 12 o'clock. Some people don't leave their houses. Did you take that into consideration? Question mark. That people sleep until 11 o'clock. No, I do. take that into consideration. There's one more witness to testify on behalf of Finnerty's presentation before the zoning board can vote. Hudson County View, the eye of the community.